Jodie Foster, the network premiere, Anna and the King, ABC Saturday, 8, 7 Central. If you're planning any outdoor activities this weekend, some tips to keep it safe. And what to expect if you'll be on the road for the holiday? Your news starts now. This is Kota Territory, serving South Dakota, Nebraska, and Wyoming. Live, local, this is Kota Territory News at 10. Whether it's the mountains, the beach, or somewhere in between, Americans by the millions are on their way this holiday weekend. Good evening, I'm Chad Olson. And I'm Alicia Garcia. This is Coda Territory News at 10. Despite a soggy economy and an elevated terror alert, Americans are hitting the highways, airways, and rails this Memorial Day weekend. AAA looks for record numbers to be on the road for what is traditionally the kickoff of the summer driving season. With the orange alert in effect, travelers could face delays at checkpoints or at security. Most people say they don't mind the long lines and extra security checks. The heightened terror alert means more police and security officers at airports. Around the country, canine units are patrolling in some areas, and there may be random vehicle inspections. Holiday travelers hitting South Dakota's highways this weekend should expect law enforcement out in full force. State troopers say they're planning sobriety checkpoints, but of course they won't disclose the exact locations. And watch that lead foot as well. Expect saturation points throughout the state to catch speeders. Holiday travelers aren't the only ones that state troopers will watch closely this weekend. Speaking on Coda Territory News at noon, State Trooper Ryan McCauley says the higher terror alert will affect how they look at everyone. It's a high priority for the highway patrol. We'll, you know, we're, we're still looking for the hazardous materials trucks, the, the motor carrier issues, um, and, and keeping our eyes open and, and aware and vigilant for, for the higher terror alert. Mothers Against Drunk Driving says that Memorial Day is now the deadliest holiday weekend. We'll tell you just how deadly the roads are. That story after meteorologist Eric Gardner and his forecast first. Eric? Well, we did have some very active weather over parts of Coda Territory later on this afternoon, but this evening things are looking pretty good. This is our Golden West weather cam shot uh, down in Pine Ridge, and it was down around the Pine Ridge area, especially west of there where some severe weather occurred earlier on. You can see the clouds darkening during the late afternoon and early evening hours, but during the day, mostly sunny skies. All the severe weather is out of the area down in Nebraska right now. That's going to set us up for some very nice weather this Memorial Day weekend. When you wake up in the morning, about 48 degrees, sunny to partly cloudy skies, 70s by lunchtime, 78 tomorrow afternoon. No severe weather in the forecast. More details on the Memorial Day weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Felicia? And Memorial Day weekend is supposed to be the time to remember the men and women who died for our country, but it's also the deadliest holiday when it comes to drunken driving accidents. Last year, nearly 18,000 people were killed in alcohol-related crashes, 42% of all highway deaths. In 2001, 284 people died over the Memorial Day weekend. A third of the drunk drivers were repeat offenders. New legislation is being drafted to give police more ability to get those drivers off the road. And Mothers Against Drunk Drivers continues its campaign to make drinkers more responsible. You know, have a designated driver. Have someone you can call if you need to call them uh, to get you home. Uh, we're pushing for seatbelt usage. And Matt is pushing for new federal legislation that would withhold highway funds from states that don't get repeat offenders off the roads. Well, the holiday weekend is usually a difficult time for blood banks. Just when they need more blood donations, folks are going off on vacation. But there is mixed news from local blood banks. The supply of whole blood in Rapid City is stable today, but components, particularly platelets, are low. Only 150 donors regularly give platelets at United Blood Services. That's key because the Omaha Street office is the only West River location where one can donate platelets. One reason for the shortage, the absence of Ellsworth personnel. You know, we have people coming back, the troops coming back from Ellsworth that have been deployed previously, and we're still not seeing an increase in donors. Um, we lost a lot of that support when, when the end of the hostilities came. You must also schedule an appointment at United Blood Services to donate platelets. Their office, however, is closed on Memorial Day. And this holiday is filled with an American tradition as popular as baseball and apple pie, grilling at mealtime. But it could be deadly if you aren't paying attention. Whether gas or charcoal, don't cook next to a home or under a trees. And always supervise children and pets around hot grills. When using a gas grill, make sure the tubes and hoses aren't clogged, either from insects or food grease. Make sure there are no leaks from hoses or valves. As for charcoal grills, only use approved lighter fluid and don't douse hot coals with uh, more fluid. When you finish grilling, you want to go ahead and let your 
coals from your charcoal get nice and cool first, cool to the touch before you get rid of them in a, in a safe container. And definitely don't grill indoors. About 30 people a year die from this insane practice. And safe grilling also means safe cooking. One of the most common causes of a foodborne illness is undercooked meat. It's also one of the easiest problems to solve. Cook hamburger at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Pork and poultry needs hotter temperatures, 800, 180 degrees. To check temperatures, use a meat thermometer. Stick the thermometer into the thickest part of the meat, but stay away from the bone, which will give you a false reading. A decent meat thermometer only costs 5 to $10, and it can save you from foodborne illnesses. Well, it's a city money controversy that could affect how the police do their job in Rapid City. The Rapid City Council votes on whether to expand the public safety building, and we'll tell you how they voted coming up next. And it's the time of year where you have to help in the yard or maybe even add on a deck. But if you have help, beware you could be responsible if they end up injured. We'll tell you how to protect yourself next. Brought to you by Toyota. Get the feeling. Fridays this summer, Lipton Ice Tea presents the Good Morning America Summer Concert Series. It's just one sizzling act after another, and it all kicks off in high gear next Friday. With a rocket live performance by superstar John Mellencamp. I'm Chris Bury. Coming up on Nightline, it's a secret process done behind closed doors until now. Inside the college admissions game, the schools have spoken. Now it's up to the kids tonight. Welcome back tonight. On an 8-2 vote today, the Rapid City Council approves their share of a project to expand the public safety building. Officers and staff have long complained about the cramped quarters and inadequate space of the building on Kansas City Street that houses the police and sheriff's departments and the office of the state's attorney. On Monday, a tie vote by the council effectively stalled an approval for an additional $900,000 for that project. But today, the, their reversal leaves one department head more than pleased. Well, obviously, we're very excited. We're grateful to the, to the council that they were able to find that money and reprioritize the money. Uh, obviously, the employees are excited. Uh, this is a needed uh, improvement that's been needed for several years, and it looks like we're going to hopefully get to move forward. The council's approval is not the final word, however. On Tuesday, the Pennington County Commission will have the final say on whether to approve the bid. A Dakota Territory School District faces its second opt-out. It's part of a parent-led fight against the budget crisis. Over the next three years, the Spearfish School District faces a $1.5 million deficit. Parents hope to ease that amount by opting out of the state's property tax freeze. A previous opt-out attempt by the school board was defeated by over 200 votes in 2002. The board then had to cut nearly $500,000 in programs and faculty. Parents say the current budget crisis is a major one because continuously cutting programs and teachers only jeopardizes student so education. at a state level. Um, it's going to continue to be a problem and you know we're if we're needing to opt out just to maintain programs I mean that we're not even talking about in, in increasing anything or reinstating some of the things that have been cut um, so yeah I, I yes it is a drastic but I do believe that um, these are drastic times the Spearfish School Board has until July 1st to make a decision for next year's budget well for weeks Highway 385 has been nothing more than delays and dirt the Department of Transportation says that that could soon be over. Two of the three layers of asphalt are finally down with temporary paint near Pluma. Paving on the south end of the highway has begun. Construction crews say that if Mother Nature cooperates, it could be done paving by the end of July. There's been problems with this road going up Strawberry Hill for a long time, and something needed to be done. They needed uh, three lanes on the steeper sections of the road, which, which they are doing, and that, that's going to help out a lot with the traffic and the tourists, especially in the summer. Because Motorists can drive through the entire construction project, but you might expect up to 20-minute delays during the day. In news around South Dakota, a Madison woman has been sentenced to half a year in prison for a fatal traffic accident near the Wyoming border last October. Tammy Marco had pleaded guilty to vehicular homicide for an accident that killed a friend who was riding with her. Another 14 names are going to the governor for a possible pardon. The Board of Pardons and Paroles granted 14 applications today, in addition to 11 already sent to the governor. 
The South Dakota Division of Insurance says workers' compensation rates will go up July 1st. It says insurance company losses in investment income and higher medical and hospital costs are among the reasons for the increase. Ever think about who might be responsible if someone working in your home or on your property is hurt? In tonight's Investing in America, why you may be caught off guard if you don't have some protection. If you hire a friend to help build an addition to your house, you might need it. If you have regular cleaning help, you might need it. And if you have a nanny to watch the kids, you most likely need it. Insurance protection. Okay. You're obviously running a big risk of being responsible for their uh, medical bills if they're hurt or uh, their lost wages. It's something many of us overlook. We never really thought, and how could she get hurt by working inside of the house, but I guess it could happen. Whether you're responsible varies from state to state. Answers to the following questions will help you decide if you're liable. How are the people paid? Are you providing the materials? Are you setting the, the hours? At that point, I think you've created an employee relationship. If you're paying the worker directly, not through a company, that person is your employee. For instance, if you hire a nanny on your own, most states require you to purchase workers' compensation. In the event that there was an accident, I would think that that would be something I would need to have to cover that person. You don't need extra protection if you're using independent contractors like a lawn service, a construction crew, or a house cleaning agency. When you hire a contractor, at that point they're ultimately responsible and you need to have proof of that. We have some advice to consider before hiring help. To find out more, you can go to our website at codatv.com, click on the Investing in America icon. It's beginning to feel like summertime, but will the weather cooperate this holiday weekend? Meteorologist Eric Gardner is in next with the area's most accurate forecast. Hmm. Any recipe that starts out open three beers is worth a shot. Add a pack of Johnsonville brats, simmer with onions, Add just recipe to four beers. Grill and serve with your favorite condiments. And if the first bite reminds a certain someone she picked Mr. Right, well. Welcome to heaven on a bun. Welcome to Johnsonville. Meteorologist Eric Gardner holds the seal of the National Weather Association. Well, finally, the weather has calmed down all across Coda Territory tonight after some pretty wild weather earlier on this afternoon. Temperature's pretty warm out there, still 61 degrees in downtown Rapid City. There were a few showers this afternoon in Deadwood. You had two hundredths of an inch, not really that significant. You're at 54. 66 in Hot Springs and 60 right now in the Martin area. Winds are generally out of the northwest, barely. <laughs> calm right now, but around three or four miles per hour earlier on this evening, bringing in a little more stable air, so that chance for storms is over with until perhaps Monday or Tuesday. Looks like a more stable pattern as we head through the weekend. Our forecast, 48 when you wake up, 70s by lunchtime, and a high of 78 in Rapid City tomorrow. It's going to be a warm one. We'll be topping 80 on Sunday. Strong upper-level disturbance in North Dakota moves southeast, and this afternoon in that very humid, unstable air, severe weather broke out in the eastern and southern sections of our viewing area. Now that severe weather is in Nebraska, where severe thunderstorm watches continue. A number of reports of large hail and damaging winds in Nebraska uh, this evening. Looks like tomorrow the storms will again form off to the east and south of the area. Right here in Coda Territory, we will be mostly on the dry side. Highs today made it up to 77 out at the airport in Custer. 72, much warmer for you. 77 in Gillette. Look at this hot weather in central Wyoming. 86 in Casper. We'll be seeing temperatures around 80 even in South Dakota as we head through the weekend into the early part of next week. Tonight's cool down to 61 at the airport. A pair of 55s in Phillip and also in Pierre. 62 in Valentine, Nebraska. 61 in Alliance. Still some pretty warm, humid air out there, but the atmosphere is more stable, so we are not calling for thunderstorms over the weekend. In Kadoka, you had nickel-sized hail this afternoon, golf ball-sized hail in the Phillip area and 13 miles west of Oglala with that particularly severe storm had 15 minutes worth of golf ball-sized hail reported. That same storm did drop a tornado down in Dawes County, Nebraska, 10 miles north of Shadron. 
a tornado touched down this afternoon. So there was some pretty intense weather earlier on this afternoon, but it's all gone now. Very weak boundary, really more of a wind shift line moving through the area. It's going to be ahead of that tomorrow where the storms form. Not really around Coda territory, but off towards the east and south. Although temperatures are going to be pretty warm tomorrow, we're not going to see a lot of cooling, if any, behind this front or trough, but we are going to be seeing some dry conditions Saturday, Sunday, and for much of Monday, but a slight chance of a thunderstorm perhaps on Monday afternoon. Tonight, mild temperatures, partly cloudy skies, 48 degrees in Rapid City, 40s in the hills, about 50 in Spearfish. That's all it's going to get down to. Pretty balmy this evening. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, and it will be warm. 80 in Spearfish tomorrow, 78 at least in Rapid City, 70s in the hills. Northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's that seven-day forecast. 78 tomorrow, 80 on Sunday. Just perfect weather for outdoor activities and travel around the region. Maybe an isolated thunderstorm on Monday. Not a big deal. And then look at this. Wow. Some information looking at this evening. Big Ridge of high pressure and some 80s likely by the middle of next week, but some changes towards the end of next week. You know, it's uh, not too often we can say we have a nice, sunny, dry Memorial Day weekend here in Coda Territory. It could be lousy, but not this year. It's going to be great, so a lot of people can get out and enjoy it. Or mow the yard and do all that sort of stuff, too. <laughs> Still outdoor activity. They'll Absolutely. Should be great. Swimming pool weather. Perfect. Very good. All right. Thanks, Eric. You bet. The World Health Organization believes it has traced the origin of the SARS virus. We'll tell you where it may have come, may have come from. And every once in a while, an old drug is found to have more uses. A cancer-killing drug that's working to destroy lupus as well. To get anywhere, you've got to grab life by the horns. Dodge. Carpet Mart's Memorial Day flooring sale ends Monday. It's where you get all three for one low price. Carpet, cushion, and installation. Plus, there's no down payment and no interest until 2005. Right now, choose from over 1,000 fashionable styles and colors. Plus, buy your beautiful carpet this week at Carpet Mart for as low as $1.69 a square foot and have it professionally installed with cushion at no extra charge. You can buy now with no down payment and no interest until 2005, and Carpet Mart pays all the interest. But hurry, the Memorial Day flooring sale ends Monday at Carpet Mart, Rapid City's exclusive Carpet One dealer. Legendary Jeep vehicles have always taken you where no other vehicle can, which left you with only one problem, lodging. But now, during the Jeep Tent Event, when you lease or buy a Jeep Liberty starting around 18.5, you'll get the added protection of our 770 Powertrain Limited Warranty and a special edition Jeep Tent at no extra charge. So, get to your Jeep dealer today and hit the road with a new Jeep Liberty. Then, wherever it ends up taking you, you'll always have a nice place to stay. It was quite a storm. We had golf ball size hail. And it was just like day turned to night. The hail was bouncing off the side of the house. You could actually see the dents in the roof. It was wild. The hood of my car was totally wiped out. Our screened in porch got damaged. Like somebody had taken a hammer and just hit it all over the place. We called our American family agent. We just called our American family agent. The claims person pointed out things that we didn't even see. With American family, you don't have to worry. All your protection under one roof. American family insurance. This summer, take the entire family on an adventure in a Fleetwood motorhome from Mid-State Camper Sales. Stop dreaming and start living with low interest financing. This year, you can afford it at Mid-State Camper Sales along I-90 and Blackhawk, where nobody beats our deals. This summer's family adventure starts at Mid-State Campers with great deals on Coleman Tent Trailers. Go out and have some fun this summer, courtesy of Coleman Tent Trailers and Mid-State Campers along I-90 in Blackhawk, where nobody beats our deals. Welcome back. The SARS virus is being linked to three small mammals in China, and researchers are considering whether the animals passed it on to humans. The World Health Organization says the respiratory disease has been traced to the civet cat and two other animals. A civet cat isn't really a cat. It's a raccoon-like creature native to Asia and North Africa. University of Hong Kong researchers examined 25 animals in a live animal market in southern China. They say they found the SARS virus in six civets, as well as a badger and a raccoon dog. But the World Health Organization says it's impossible to tell from the study whether the animals spread the virus to humans or whether they caught the virus from people. You know, thankfully, this isn't dinnertime conversation, but the civet cat is actually a delicacy. That's right, it is. So, <laughs> something to think about. That could be, could be the link. Didn't, they, didn't we say yesterday that the, it came from outer space, SARS? Maybe it didn't. Maybe the civets are from outer space. Could be a mystery there, too. New in tonight's Family Health Cast, testosterone and heart disease. Helene tells us about a possible new secret weapon. 
study finds that men with type 2 diabetes who have low testosterone levels are more likely to have severe hardening of the arteries, which increases the risk of having a heart attack. Researchers say the hard benefits of testosterone replacement therapy should be explored. Our Health Focus reported cancer drug helps lupus. For scientists, the condition known as lupus is a mystery that has been hard to solve. The immune system, instead of attacking foreign things uh, like viruses and bacteria, starts to affect the patient's own tissues. And it doesn't discriminate. Kidney failure, it can cause uh, damage to the heart, uh, it can cause damage to the lungs. Sometimes the central nervous system is involved. Lupus is not a cancer, but Dr. Robert Brodsky and his colleagues have found using high doses of chemotherapy drug for four days is more effective than lower doses over long periods of time. The idea is to blast the lupus once, wipe out the abnormal immune system, and allow the body to learn to function normally. So essentially the immune system is started over again from when the person was born. After an average follow-up of more than two and a half years, nearly half of the patients in this study are lupus free. At age 15, Camille Kahn was diagnosed with lupus. With her kidneys failing, she decided to go through this new procedure. I started to feel better, mainly because my kidney function improved. Now at 23, Camille is a healthy young woman. I am lupus free, and it's awesome. Something she is thankful for every single day. Another benefit is this treatment does not cause infertility, the side effect of the longer term treatment. Our health tip, get rid of warts with duct tape. To bid warts sayonara, cover them with duct tape for two months. Occasionally removing it, soak the area and gently scrape it with an emery board. In a study, 85% of people got rid of warts versus only 60% treated with lit liquid nitrogen. Duct tape apparently irritates skin and thereby stimulates your own immune system to attack the wart-causing virus. For more information on lupus, log on to CodaTV.com for transcripts and a self-addressed stamped envelope. With the Family HealthCast, I'm Helene Duhamel. Tomorrow, a new way to diagnose a serious eye infection. Brian Gettles here with sports. And Brian, before we head into the weekend, another chapter in the saga that is the Colonial and Annika Sornstein. Yeah, second day of fun at the Colonial for the gallery, but the question was, would the gallery get double the pleasure for the weekend? And post-22 and post-320 begin classic weekends. Highlights from the spring and Woodbat classic next in sports. It took months of preparation, but it's finally here. It's out of this world. It's no interest for three full years, and it's only at Fisher Furniture. Fisher's takes furniture buying to a whole new level with this historic offer. Zero percent interest for three full years on the best selection in the four-state area. It's no interest to finance charges for three full years. This Memorial Day weekend at all three Fisher stores in Rapid City. Great years ahead of the competition. Choice. It's Jeep Days. Now, qualified returning Daimler Chrysler lessees can lease a Jeep Grand Cherokee for $339 a month and get our 770 powertrain limited warranty. It all adds up to the best values in America. Now, get a $1,000 military incentive through June 2nd. Mayday, Mayday, our prices are going down. For four days only, Toyota the Black Hills has moved their entire used inventory to Rapid Chevrolet for an emergency liquidation sale. Shop 300 used vehicles at one convenient location. We mean business with interest as low as 3.9, along with discounts up to $2,000. Make your best deal, click the coupon in the Rapid City Journal, and take an additional $500 off. Toyota the Black Hills at Rapid Chevrolet. Two outstanding used inventories at one location, now through Saturday, 5 p.m. What a beautiful neighborhood. Honey, pull over. I'd love to live in a home like this someday. You know what? I think we can. At First Western Bank, we're more than a bank. We're First Western Mortgage, with locations throughout the Black Hills and Badlands. Someday might be today. We're more than a bank. We're First Western Mortgage, equal housing lenders. 
Brought to you by Great Western Bank. Great people, great locations, great bank. It'd be a little farther along than we are right now when we got a lot of uh, factions. The weather was absolutely terrible, uh, but it's getting better right now. Post 22 hoping to bounce back from a tough weekend. After Cheyenne took two out of three from Post 22 last weekend, Dave Plouffe admitted that his team wasn't as far along as he would like. Part of that is attributed to a lot of wet weather, but between now and Monday, Plouffe's troops will get a lot of time on the diamond. Tonight begins a stretch of five games in the next four days. Matt Anderson making his first start of the year, and he picked up right where he left off last year. Top two facing Josh Sargent. Anderson on a pitch count, so he went just four innings, but he struck out nine. In the bottom of the second, his offense gave him some support. Dustin Rowland leading off the inning, fights one off. It falls in the outfield, and it turns into a hustle double. And that would be key in this inning because four batters later, Mike Durst comes to the plate with two outs, and he comes through in the clutch. Anderson and Aaron Lacine come around to score. Post 22 never looks back, blanking Gillette tonight, five to nothing. Post 320 opening up the first ever Wood Bat Classic against Casper Josh Lundin making his second start of the year after breaking his non-pitching arm last month in practice. The pitching arm, well, that one still works just fine. Just ask Casper's Dustin Williams, Jack Kidd, and Tyler Peterson. Lundin strikes out the side in the first, but does allow an unearned run. Bottom one, Stars trying to get that run back with a man at third, two outs. Brian Berenzi grounds out, stranding the runner, and that unearned run is the only run so far. 320 trails in the seventh. One to nothing. Not since Tiger Woods burst onto the scene has the PGA Tour received so much attention. But with Annika Sorenstam battling to make the cut at the Colonial, the question was, would the attention continue for two more days? It was a tough start for Annika in the bunker on one, but how about a beauty out of the bunker to save par, and she would use that momentum to carry on to number two. This putt for birdie, and suddenly Annika is at even. But then the bogey started piling up on 18. This putt is for par, and Annika would finish an emotional two days, five over, four shots away from making the cut. You know, for me to come here and get the opportunity to really push myself and, and live my dream, and I, I, feel, I hope other women and girls feel the same way, that they just got to follow their heart, and I mean, that's why I'm here. I just want to push myself and do what I love to do the best, and yeah, it's been really a really historical moment uh, this whole week, and... Um, you know, to be part of all this, this is something that I will never forget. And Just a few miles from Colonial Country Club, the Mavs and Spurs meeting in game three in the first. David Robinson blocked, Tim Duncan not. He led all scores with 34, also had 24 boards. Moments later, Michael Finley going to pull up for three, but it would be a rough shooting night for Dallas on the whole. They shot just 40% from the floor. And then in the second, it's Steven Jackson getting open in the corner. Speedy Claxton finds him. The three ball is good. The Spurs drop Dallas to take a 2-1 series lead, the final 96-83. to Thousands of miles north on the ice. Game 7, Devils Senators. Third period, 2-1 New Jersey till Ottawa's Roddick Bonk. Rips one by Martin Brodeur. Game tied at two. But how about this pass? Just over two minutes left. Grant Marshall through the wicket to the defender to Jeff Friesen. That's a game winner, and it will be the Devils and Ducks playing for the cup. Just the... Stanley Cup final that everyone predicted from the beginning. Of course, everyone saw the seventh seeded Anaheim Mighty Ducks. You know, the coasting their way through. The NHL has to be drooling over the ratings because you have market. I'm assuming Anaheim's one, or well, yeah. two, and New Jersey, right? Pretty close to market number one. That's a, that's a very good point. I think I think there's some carryover from the Rally Monkey, from the Angels from last year, somehow making his way and showing some presence there with the Mighty Ducks. Could be because the Angels aren't using it. <laughs> that's right. Thanks, Brian. Well, in addition to summer vacation, it's what every teacher hopes for, a visit from the Prize Patrol. Some teachers got that visit today, and we'll tell you what happens next. Weather Cams brought to you by Golden West. Information, communications, entertainment. Who cares about the way you see? I care. 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 Black Hills Regional Eye Institute is your number one resource for eye care. We bring the most advanced equipment, the most skillful procedures, the most professional people into our system for one simple reason. When your sight is at stake, I care. Black Hills Regional Eye Institute, visionary eye care. You'll see. Absolutely beautiful weather this Memorial Day weekend, 78 tomorrow, 80 on Sunday, Memorial Day 76, mostly dry across the area, just the slightest chance of an afternoon storm on Monday, but no severe weather in the forecast, 
Saturday and Sunday. Get out and enjoy. Weather will not be a problem on this particular Memorial Day 2003. Chad? Well, it was a welcome surprise for many Rapid City teachers this morning. The Prize Patrol made a mad dash trip through schools today. They interrupted classes and caught teachers off guard to hunt down the district's newest recipients of grants. The money comes to the Rapid City Public School Foundation. These teachers applied for the grants just last month. In total, 12 different grants are awarded to nine schools today, more than $5,700. The foundation has awarded more than 130,000 private dollars for teacher grants for the past nine years. Some pennies from heaven nice for the education system. In Just as the school year is wrapping up, they get a nice little gift. Nice send-off and hope they have a nice summer vacation. They deserve it. Coverage you've come to expect, coverage you can count on. Our first team salute tonight comes from senior physics students at Custer High School. Thanks for watching. Nightline is next. Have a good Memorial Day weekend.